Craig Wright back on the stand tomorrow in the Koba versus Craig Wright Satoshi identity trial. This is going to be a day 14 recap of the witnesses and also what to expect possibly and predict for tomorrow. We're going to break down some just absolutely blockbuster information that I want to thank people for sending to me. So stay tuned for this. All right. Check this out. So we had uh, first Mike Kern. He's an all-star witness, an early Bitcoin developer, a Google guy. And he was brought up to the stand as, a, as the first witness for COPA of the day. And the main thing that, uh, you know, this is Lord Gravenu that wanted to cross-examine him. He hammered him pretty hard on this dinner in 2016 uh, that he had with Dr. Wright. And apparently there was a lot of, uh, there was a disagreement between the testimony between Stephen Matthews, which he gave two days ago, a couple days ago, and then now my, Mr. Mike Kern's testimony regarding who actually organized the dinner. Mr. Matthews says, well, uh, according to John Matomas, this is on the, he's reading, you know, Lord Gravity is reading the transcript to him. He's saying, well, you know, according to this transcript, it was actually uh, John Matonis that you contacted to meet Dr. Wright. You wanted to meet Dr. Wright. That's what, that's what he's being told. He's saying, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't want to meet Dr. Wright. John Matonis contacted me and said, would you like to meet Dr. Wright? So they had some disagreements on the factual of who set the dinner up. There were some other disagreements on the facts of whether or not at the dinner, the purpose of the dinner, was it about taking in information from Enchain, which is a, which is an intellectual property company, or was it just about, uh, you know, learn more about Bitcoin? I mean, literally he, there was a disagreement on the testimony here and, you know, Dr. Wright's counselors, Dr. Lord Gravity's strategy was to try to discredit Mike Hearn and his credibility. It looks like, um, he failed to do that. I mean, it wasn't, uh, anything major substantial. We've just got a conflict in testimony though, which could be an issue later. We got Stephen Matthews saying one thing about the, the dinner. Now Mike Kern saying another. So we've got a, 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 what's called a tribal issue of fact right here that needs to be addressed. We'll see how that plays out. I can't say really, uh, second witness was an expert called Mr. Hinnett. Hinnett. He was a C plus plus program developer or architect, and he was on the stand to, uh, you know, according to his report to state that what Dr. Wright did, the way that he wrote certain, uh, did a certain program, it wasn't possible. He couldn't have done it that way. That was his, his allegations. And so what, what the cross examiner revealed for Dr. Uh, for Dr. Wright as solicitor, Mr. Hill, he basically said that, Hey, you know, are you, are you able to verify that it's impossible to, uh, to do this, this certain way with the C plus plus program? And he says, uh, well, it's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely. And he used an analogy of like taking a, starting with an airplane and then taking it down to a car or a, or a super fast race car to a, to a Ford. I mean, it was just like a, an analogy of saying, well, you wouldn't do that. Um, it wouldn't make any sense. It would take longer. It'd be harder to do. And then Laura, uh, the actual, the court itself, Justice Miller asked, asked the expert the same uh, question at the end to clarify his question. So do you mean that, yeah, that it, that it could, Justice Miller asked me, you mean it couldn't be done? Or in what is the outcome of this undefined uh, outcome? And so he wanted clarification on that. Ultimately, the uh, expert, Mr. Hyden, answered that it could be done, but it was just more likely than not a, a very, uh, it would be a very inefficient way to get the outcome of doing it. But it was possible. So it, the, the, in this case here, it looks like the, the court understood the witness and, you know, another, it, it was definitely not a win for right in this case. I mean, it didn't discredit the witness altogether. So it looks like that's going to be a kind of a balance here, uh, where that would go to COPA most likely. Now the other, the third witness here, we had Mr. Zook, Mr. Wilcox O'Hearn, the creator of Zcash, a privacy coin, which is a fork of Bitcoin. Um, or as I basically, it goes by the name Zuko. So, he was on the stand uh, for probably, you know, a long time. They were trying to, they were trying to basically, the objective of the cross was to cre make him admit that he received Satoshi coins in 2009. And he denied receiving any Satoshi coins in 2009. It was also to get him to admit that he downloaded the Bitcoin protocol in 2009. He denied that as well. He said he, he used, he didn't have Windows, but then later on he said he had Linux program that could have downloaded it. So... You know, this witness was, uh, it created a little bit of, uh, you know, uncertainty and potentially his credibility. However, the motive was unclear as to why, you know, what was, what would the motive for him to lie and say that he didn't download the Bitcoin protocol in 2009 and that he didn't get uh, coins from Satoshi. He said Satoshi was his hero. He would have remembered that. 
So it's unclear as to the motive. So as to why he would lie about that, I don't see what the how he'd benefit. Unless it's maybe a Zcash reason that Zcash would benefit somehow. But I couldn't quite see the motive. So I've got to say that he was being honest at this point. He just didn't didn't receive them. And so again, that's another win for Copa on this uh, on this witness. So, but that leads us up to what's to come for tomorrow. So big surprise, Doctor Wright's back on the stand. Today's definitely going to go to Copa. Uh, with the, with these three witnesses, I mean, not none of them are big wins for Wright. Uh, you know, slightly incredible, but it, it's not a, it's not enough to to make a landslide saying, "Oh, he's Satoshi," and identify with that. It's not going to happen. Tomorrow, however, Wright's getting recalled. Now, I want to drop something that is absolute bombshell. I read this last night, and it completely uh, blew my mind. Okay, and I'm and I'm really doing my best to try to report on this case uh, as a non-lawyer's perspective without just interjecting all my opinions and bias and all this nonsense. So I'm really doing my best. But this is something that was sent to me and I'll let you evaluate it yourself. This is a uh, white paper from 2008, okay? Uh, written by, by Dr. Craig Wright about detecting, st detecting Haydn statistical methods for classifying the use of Haydn-based stenography in executable files. This is a published white paper from 2008 on SANS. And here's uh, just proof because I don't, I, I, I wouldn't believe this if I didn't see it myself. Uh, it's right here, 2008, you'll notice, accepted. See that, 22nd of June, 2008, by who? Author Craig Wright. All right, so what this paper says is it's an instruction file on how to do what's called steganography. It means nothing to me, okay? Steganography, I don't, I don't know what that even is. Until I read this paper. Let me break it down for you. All right. It's known, uh, so it, it is known as Haydn. It changes the statistical distribution of seven ad calls in the assembly code of an, uh, of an embedded in the hidden data. So, so steganography is an art form of science of hiding text messages and other data this is commonly graphic files, audio files, and video files. Haydn is a steganographic tool that is designed to hide data inside a binary executable file. And the example that is used in the paper that everybody can relate to here, back in Roman times, all right, the practices of ancient Athenians were the head of a messenger was shaved and subsequently tattooed with a message that would be covered with his hair, rendering it unseen if the message was captured. Messenger was captured. And the same si system was adopted by Roman generals who would shave a slave's head and then tattoo a message on it, sending the messenger out on the errant after the hair grew back. So a message would be underneath the shaved, the hair that had been shaved tattooed on there. Now, according to this paper, there's three ways of doing it. There's covert communication, embedding data. There's signing, which is a programmer. Cryptographic signature can be embedded into itself. The recipient of the binary, uh, basically it has not been tampered with. So it could show the guy's name, the programmer's name that wrote a paper, but, no, but nobody else could see it. And then there's watermarking, which is, is very risky in the author, in this case, Dr. Wright. He notes that it's not recommended to use hide in for watermarks because they're fragile. So why is this important? Well, because with a the, with the really close case in the, on the balance right now, without some sort of bombshell information from Dr. Wright, he's more likely going to lose. So, in reading this paper and coordinating with his testimony from last week where he already testified that he, remember, we talked about it a couple of videos ago. I'll, I'll link it here at the end. And that he testified in the, in the record that he used steganography at the time while he was writing the Bitcoin white paper. And that his papers, he embedded codes in at that time. He testified to that. So tomorrow, Dr. Wright gets back on the stand. Friends have asked me, well, what's, what's going to happen? You know, when's his chance? Is he ever going to get a chance to... to reveal this? Well, the way that rules of evidence work in a case like this is it's tomorrow. Tomorrow is the chance. It's not going to be in closing. It's not going to be an expert testimony with rebuttal. It's going to be while well, rights on the stand.
So if it's going to happen, it's going to be tomorrow. And so if it happens tomorrow, then what Wright would have to do is be crossed, uh, you know, rebuttal crossed. It, uh, it's going to be an interesting procedure. I mean, how it's even going to happen? Because you figure Copa is going to cross-examine Wright tomorrow, and they're going to hit him up on some things. Perhaps maybe they want to ask him about this. Perhaps they believe that he can't even prove that there's a, a signature inside the white paper, and they want to give him the opportunity. There's a challenge for Copa. Get Hoff and ask Wright. Say, challenge him. Make him prove it right now. Do it. There's a challenge for Hoff to get it on the record. He's going to be on the stand tomorrow. So he would have the opportunity to say, well, if he puts some sort of a signature inside of the Bitcoin white paper that no one else could identify but him, it's in this secret steganography format, like a guy with a shaved head and a tattoo underneath it in the Roman times, well, he would have the opportunity to reveal it. Okay. And if that would reveal it, the purpose of this paper, which Dr. Wright authored in 2008, was for just this reason to reveal the actual author, the, the developer, the programmer, the secret author behind a project in the case of identifying identity. And a little birdie told me, a couple little birdies have told me that Dr. Wright's extremely confident going into tomorrow. Now, Dr. Wright's usually always confident, but you know, I'm hearing that he's extremely confident. So I would expect some fireworks for tomorrow. These three witnesses for today, if this is all Craig Wright's going to rely on, he's going to lose the case. You know, I mean, I'm really, unless some other things come about, his rebuttal evidence on these witnesses is really not that strong. It's okay. Again, we're at a really kind of a balancing effect. I'm giving this to Copa today at a six to seven, even though Wright's ahead by one, you know, I, I could see him losing more ground unless some big bombshell thing happens tomorrow when he's on the stand, he's going to have all day. So... 2 a.m. San Francisco time, you could count on me being in the courtroom, watching this thing live on the edge of my chair to see exactly what happens, and I will be reporting back. So stay tuned for this. Uh, this is a real paper. It did actually happen. 2008, it's published on the Sands. You could look it up. Craig Wright, what is steganography? Uh, you know, and, and the name of the paper as it talks about this Haydn. So I challenge anybody to go pull it up and read it for themselves. I know that people like... Uh, you know, educated people and, uh, you know, people in academia, like my mom, who I, who I dearly love, she would probably want to look at this and read it because it's just a, it's a very interesting nuance to think of, wait a second, this guy who wrote the paper on this very advanced encoding process on, on embedding secret messages into papers, into documents, he's being examined on the stand tomorrow. And he might have actually, he's already testified to saying he was doing that with his papers and his white paper, the Bitcoin white paper was written in 2008 after this came out. So it's like, huh, really? This is kind of, it's unfolding into this melodramatic drama uh, that, uh, of Shakespearean proportion. And here I am, a guy out in California getting to recap on it. So thank everybody for watching. I appreciate all the love, the support, sharing the videos, the subscribers, leave a comment. Okay, hit the like button, you know, and just freaking get this message out there. The time has come. Looks like this is going to be it. Tomorrow is going to be likely do or die for uh, Dr. Wright. I don't see how he's going to get another chance after this unless there's some sort of a special procedure. So if I were hit on his side, on his, his counselors, I would be letting him know the risk reward saying, look, I get it. You're holding everything in your chest. You're not going to tell anybody what you're going to do or what you can do, or maybe you can't do it. But Tomorrow may be his last chance, according to the court procedural aspects, to show his cards. It could be his last chance. So he's got to weigh that risk. You know, it's going to be some sort of special instruction to wave his hand at the very last minute and do something um, other than tomorrow. So stand by for this. I'll see everybody at the top.